me go do a quick push-up. I'll be right back. in the kitchen. I'm in the kitchen. I'll be right there. I'll be right there. Perfect. Hey, what's up? It's Steve with 360-3 Family. I'm about to go live on YouTube. I'll see you guys there right now. All right, all right, give me one, hold on, hold on. Put everything here on vibrator. All right, how's everyone doing? How is everyone doing? Let's go to the live chat here. I'm excited here, live chat. Is it showing me my live chat? Put on this one. Microphone check, check, one, two, three, test, test. Microphone check, check, one, two, three, test, test. If you guys can hear me clearly, if you guys can please put a number one in the chat box. If you guys can hear me clearly, if you can please put a one on the chat box. All right, we got Manny. What's up, Manny? Manny, can you hear me? Okay, cool. Moses, give me a one. I know. Give me one. Pierre. All right. One. Rosemary in the house. Hello, Rosemary. Rosemary has been really consistent about jumping on these live streams. I've been seeing Rosemary Washington. It's a catchy name. Manny as well. I don't think I've seen Moses before, but if you are here for the second time, welcome back. Uh, so that so now that you guys can hear me clearly, um, I wanted to go ahead and discuss something because uh, it's not the first time I hear this through email or through Instagram messages and stuff like that. But the question is, how do you advertise how do you market your brand new 360 booth business if you haven't been to any events and that's a tough one and that's something that i had to kind of overcome when i first started my business one of the things that i did is i was exploring google and youtube and what i was doing is i was doing screen recording of videos and then i would take those screen recordings of those videos and i put them on my social media so what i want to start doing for you guys is so that you guys don't have to go all over the the uh the search engine and look for videos and pictures. What I want to do for you guys, especially if you just started your business and you haven't been to any events, I want to send you guys the videos that I've captured from my events so you guys can use those videos on your social media, put those on your website, put those on your Google business. In fact, if you guys don't have a Google business, please start your Google business right away. It's a very powerful free tool to use. And this is a way that you guys are going to be able to get more clients, more calls, more inquiries, basically, and which hopefully lead to more bookings, more revenue, more money, more success for your 360 booth business. So you guys can start scaling sooner than later. So, yes, guys, if you guys can please uh, let me know. Hey, David, if you can send me some videos, do this. Go on Instagram. And on Instagram, what I'll do is I'll send you a bunch of videos that you guys can use. And some of you guys don't have cold sparkles. So what I'll do is I'll send you guys videos that don't include the cold sparkles. But that way, you guys can show those videos off. Also, if you guys go to my website, you guys can grab any pictures on my website and use them to your advantage. Post them on your Google My Business. Post them on Yelp. Post them on your Instagram. So that's what I want to do is I want to send you guys this information so you guys can use this content that I've acquired over my events. And you guys can use them to your benefit. Because remember, this channel is about helping you guys out. And I feel like if I share these videos with you guys, you guys can use these videos right away. In fact, uh, let's go ahead and start that today so if you guys are watching this right now photobomb pictures how you doing um the they are getting rid of google my business next year according to google if that's the case let's go ahead and milk it for now and use it to our advantage and i'm sure um google's going to come up with something else i do know i think they're working on something beta called i think it was 
Omni or Uno, something like that. So there's always going to be a way for Google uh, to help businesses and corporations because Google is a search engine and it's, it's e-commerce. So there's going to be something in the works. What's up, Nico? It's good to have you here. The reason I'm uh, doing this uh, this live stream, guys, out of nowhere is because one of the individuals here on my Instagram said, hey, David, I missed uh, I missed your live stream because I worked these hours. So I said, you know what, later on, I'm going to jump on there. And for the people that have different schedules that can't make it to the early ones during the morning, um, this is a chance for us to to connect. So if uh, if you guys have barely started off with your business, like I said, and you need photos, you need videos, you need content, go ahead and hit me up on Instagram and I'll send that your way. How's everyone doing? Good. All right. Thank you for the thumbs up, guys. I appreciate the love as usual. So Manny, Moses, uh, Pierre, Rosemary, Photobomb Pictures, and Ty. Ty, what's up, man? Um, and Nico. So right now, uh, well, what I just finished saying is a lot of people are barely jumping into the business. It's, and they don't have um, content to show off when they want to advertise or market their business. So if you are in that category and you need assistance, just hit me up on Instagram. I'm going to send you guys all of, uh, all of my videos, including videos that don't include the cold sparks, so that you guys can use those videos to your advantage. And if you guys hop over to my website, you guys can copy and paste any of the pictures that you guys feel would help you out with your business because I know how it is when you first start your business and you have no events under your belt. So you have no content. You have no footage. So you have to get creative. And like I said, what I started doing was just doing screen recordings on YouTube and editing on iMovie and just doing what I had to do, man. And now look at me like what? About two, almost three months later, we're doing it. We're doing it. And I think we're doing it real big. And so I, I, there's always a way. And because I know that there was a struggle for me in the beginning, I want you guys to experience the least amount of struggle. Uh, and this is going to allow me to kind of just help you out with what I have. So I want to welcome everyone that's barely jumping in right now. We have Aquita that just jumped in. Hi, David. Keep doing what you do best. I really appreciate it. You would be a good teacher. Job well done. Yeah, I would be a good teacher. That, that would be pretty dope. Um, I don't know what age I would prefer to teach if I would deal with like elementary or high school or college. But since I have you guys here, do you guys have any questions for me right now regarding the industry or um, any issues that you guys run into that we can kind of discuss right now? I don't have a full hour tonight, but I do want to address any questions you guys have. So photobomb pictures, I will send you and I am on IG in a bit. All right, cool. So if you guys need videos, I'll send you those videos through Instagram. All you guys have to do is just hit me up on Instagram and I'll send you a good amount of videos that I've collected over uh, the events that I've done in the past, along with some pictures as well, just to kind of help you guys put those on your website. Remember guys, I'm starting a website series on Wix on how I utilize Wix. In fact, oh, I can't do a screen. I thought I was like on a Zoom call as I was about to share my screen with you guys. So we got 16 operators right now on the channel. I want to welcome you all. And right now, like I said, I'm discussing uh, the the minor uh, setback you have as a brand new 360 booth business owner, how you don't have content, you don't have videos, you don't have pictures to post on your social media. And like I said, I want to help you guys out with that. So I'll be sending that information at an individual basis. Uh, if you guys just hit me up on Instagram, I'll send those videos your way along with pictures. But what I was saying is we're going to be jumping into touch picks. I'm sorry, touch picks Wix pretty soon. I'm going to be showing you guys the booking system and how I sent invoices out to customers and how easy Wix makes it to run your business as a solo entrepreneur because that's what most of us are some, some of you guys are get lucky and have a partner and that's awesome but me i roll solo so i have to do the contracts the invoices i have to uh do the booking right and then the addressing the back and forth the customer service the promoting the advertising everything on my own and wix really helps me with that and i've been using wix for a few years now because i started off using wix for my iphone repair business and then from there i decided to use it before the 360 booth business and it's actually been it's been great. It's really, it really has. So Nico, let's see. Nico wrote something here. Ah, Wix, I have that for my website. Never dived into the booking stuff. Yeah, Nico, it's a, it's wonderful, man. The, the that booking part of it is pretty badass. Um, I love the way it works. How it allows you to create a buffer between your appointments. It also allows you to have a limitation as far as how early they can book and how or how late out they can book. It allows you to do like a cancellation policy. 
uh, and the deposit and all that stuff so that when you're ready to book, you can actually have all that listed on there. So when the client is booking one, it, like when they're booking with me, I set it up to a point where they can see when they're booking, they can see, uh, okay, what's going to be required. Let's say 10 by 10 feet required 50 feet within a power uh, outlet and things like that. So like I'm telling you, man, Wix has really helped me out. Uh, can you do con contacts? I think you meant to say contracts, right? Photobomb? I think you meant to say contracts. Can you do contracts on Wix when they book? It's it's similar to a contract. It's an actual, it's an invoice. But when they are, when they're going through the process of booking with you, you have a, there's, there's a section. It's like a disclaimer and it shows um, it gives them the information. You type in that information as far as what we allow, what we don't allow, or what are the under what circumstances you can get a refund or a partial refund. The agreement part is something that you can, um, how can I say this? You can put it in and you have it as a template. So every time someone goes in there, they read within the fine lines. Now, in addition to that, you guys already know that I have a 360 booth contract on my website that's available for that too. I use a combination of my the contract that I have and I use the invoice, the invoices that Wix generates for me because all I have to do is just hit send. And because when the person goes on the Wix website and puts their first name, last name, their email and their address, Wix collects that information. So when I'm ready to send them the invoice, all I have to do is send and it sends it to that in, uh, email they use when they signed up for that booking. So this saves me lots and lots of time. Yeah, so you can do a buffer of two hours, um, same day. It just depends how you're operating, how your business is operating. Wix is uh, so Wix is free uh, for the for so it's like a demo version. You won't get all the cr the crazy cool tools. You won't get the whole uh, payment system. I don't think you get the uh, what else. You won't get the payment system. You won't get uh, the, what else do they have? The invoice system. It's limited when you go with the Wix uh, with the free version. But remember, guys, this is for your business and a website is here to stay as long as your business stays alive. They go hand in hand. You need a website for your business regardless. Now, having social media is, is important and it's great to, to have because it's free and you guys can do a lot using social media. But it's going to get to a point when you guys are going to have a lot of volume, meaning you guys are going to have a lot of bookings. And you want to make sure that there's a system in place that's doing all the heavy lifting for you. Because if I, for example, didn't have Wix right now and I had to keep track of every deposit made. I had to keep track of every payment made. I had to keep track of all the invoices that are late. I don't think I would be so successful because that part would take too much energy and time away from me to address. And then that leaves me drained. So now I don't have any extra energy to be creative and see other ways that I can scale my business and get creative to a point where I am setting myself apart from the competition. So this is why I decided to start talking about Wix because in the beginning, I was, I, you guys been growing with me and in the beginning I had different types of challenges, but now I'm at a point where how can I scale my business rolling solo? I don't have assistance right now. And so what I'm trying to do is run as efficient as possible and optimize the, the infrastructure of the business. Hey, what's up, Brittany? I'm not the best with website. Can you do a setup series, please? Yeah. Absolutely. So that's actually not a bad idea. I guess what I can do is kind of start a website from scratch um, using Wix. I think that actually would be pretty dope. So yeah, that's actually something that I'll I'll consider and I'll start um, building towards that because I feel like there is a lot of people that are more of a social people. They're like face to face and they're not so great. Well, they don't have a lot of uh, how can I say this? I don't have a lot of experience when it comes to the technical side of things and the software and stuff like that. So I completely understand. For example, I have a couple and the couple, um, the husband is very technical. He's the one that does the operations. And then the wife is the one that does the customer service because she's great with people. So I understand that people have their strengths and weaknesses. And so, yeah, I totally understand, Brittany. All right, guys, we get, we're we about almost 15 minutes in. Oh, Nico right here. Nico wrote something. It says, Nico, Wix set up everything for you. It will ask you questions about your business and builds a template when you can change or add whatever. So Nico brings up a really, really good point. One thing that's amazing about TouchPix is when you are setting up TouchPix, it does ask you, like you said, what category are you in? 
It'll even ask you questions. Are you looking for a slick style, a luxury style, a, a simple or uh, very, very plain? Or it, it even asks you what colors do you want on your website? So it, it takes everything, right? And it has like artificial intelligence where it just kind of blends everything and then boom, shoots out a website. And then what you can do is you can go in there and say, you know what? I love this. Not this so much. Let's go ahead and shrink this a little bit and add this right here. So it's like the, it's like the YouTube ads you guys see. It's really easy to use Wix and that's probably... One of the main reasons why I decided to use it for the 360 booth business because I had pretty good uh, success just doing it for my iPhone repair business, which is uh, user friendly. So yeah, Nico, thanks for uh, pointing that out. It's very easy to use. How many of you guys have uh, events coming up this weekend? I have one. I have Saturday. Um, I had to turn down an event today. Uh, yeah, I turned down an event today. She was she wanted the last minute. She won Saturday. And remember, guys, I only have one booth. So I wasn't able to book a second booking for that Saturday. It bums me out because the other two operators that I contacted uh, were not available. And the reason I contacted these operators that are within my city is because I know them face to face. I know they're going to pr provide quality work and I feel confident giving them a lead. And I know that they're going to take care of the, the customer as best as possible. But even them. They were uh, they were booked as well. So that just comes to show you guys that even though we're in a recession right now, like I said, people are going to continue to celebrate. And this celebration now entails the DJ, good food, good people, and a 360 booth. And that's us. That's the part when we come in. All right, Bernie has a, an event this Saturday. What are you using for SEO on your website? Photo uh, bomb picture. So when, I'm, when I break down the Wix, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the SEO section of Wix because Wix makes it really easy for you to type in the SEO, meaning like it, it shows you where to put your actual keywords and your phrases. And that's great because you have more control over your website. So your header one and your header two, which is, for example, when you go to a library and you're looking for a book, that book is going to have a title on the very top. So now you know what, where to go in the library. Okay, I'm going to go to the history section. I'm going to go to the uh, nonfiction. I'm going to go check out the science section. Okay, so then what uh, Google does is categorizes your website. So in your H1, of course, you're going to have the term, probably the phrase, the keyword 360 booth. And then you get to your H2, which breaks it down, not just your title, but it's going to show you what it's about or who the author is and things like that. So all that, I'm going to teach you guys how to make a website that's SEO friendly and that can easily be identified by Google so that you can rank much faster and get indexed much quicker. And then you get categorized and then you get more eyeballs on your website. Mini, stop. You do this every time. I'm on. Come here. Up. Every time I'm on the speaker talking to someone on the phone or I'm doing this, Mini always starts growling in the background. She just, she wants too much attention. And we talked about this. And that's a no go, okay? So you go over there and lay down while I do this thing. Bye. Okay, so that, that was Mini. I just heard in the background. We've had this conversation, but that girl's wild. She does what she wants. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So let's see. So Brittany has an event this Saturday. Nico, nothing for my 3C booth yet. I was thinking about running Facebook ads. Nico, uh, so if you are booked for your photo booth, when people call and book you for your photo booth, do a, a good percentage of those people uh, request a 360 booth? Um, that that's a question I have for you, man. Photobomb has three sessions this weekend, but you know what? Photobomb pictures is bit. He, um, I don't know if it, I never asked if it's a, a female who's running the business or a male, but I believe they're they they've been in the game for a while, and he has the formula down really well. He understands business. He understands his customer. He understands the business as a whole. So, I I'm not surprised that you have three sessions, man. I know you're I know you're killing it. I know you're doing a good job. I mean. Just kind of some of the stuff that you've been sharing with us on the channel and on the group. I know you have it down pretty well, and I appreciate you sharing. So Manny wrote, hey, David, is the LLC better option tax-wise? Absolutely. The LLC is definitely going to give you more tax write-offs as well. Even the $800 you pay here in California as a fee, that uh, is also you're going to be able to write off that those $800. But um, if you are barely starting off, right, and I mean barely, and you just don't have $800 to put up every year for an LLC, uh, you can do the doing business as and uh, be a sole proprietor in the very beginning. And then when you start, you know, bringing in more revenue, then you can switch over to the LLC. 
What's up, Glenda? She, uh, Glenda writes, on your touch picks, do you still do 4.5 or 5 for the slow motion feature? Um, I do a combination of 5.6 or 6 seconds. It seems like all my videos show the backside of the client more than the front. Any suggestions? That's actually a really good point that you bring up, Glenda. So what I'm going to start doing is, because I have cold sparkles, and what I want is when the camera's rotating and the cold sparkles are right behind me, I want to make sure that the slow-mo starts right here so the sparkles are on the back going. How, David? How, David? Sparkles. And the background slow-mo. So I'm going to see if there's a way to figure it out. So if you start the phone here and then it starts the motion and when it gets activated, I wanted it to come up on a sweet spot so that it catches my cold sparkles and it's consistent as far as where the slow-mo starts. So that's actually a really great question that you bring up, Linda, that I got to experiment with. Now, if it says, if you're saying that most of the time the slow motion is on their backside, to me, that sounds like people are on the booth. They're all facing the same way. And that's not the best uh, pose. You want to have people back to back to back. That way, when it's rotating, it actually captures one of the individual's slow motion versus just the back of someone. Um, yeah, because that's that's like I said, you're the director, the 360 booth director. So when people go on the platform, you want to prep them, you want to give them cues, so that way they they get a really nice video, okay? Because you're the hype man and the director. And when people most of the time go on the booth and they they want to be hugging each other, facing the same way, I tell them, okay, guys, that's a nice pose. However, and then I give them my advice, and right away they're like, okay, okay, let's go back to back, you know? Because remember, you guys, you're the director, so you got to help them out. Good, great question, Glenda. Nico, uh, they ask, they ask about usually ask about the services we offer. So I try to push a 360 more right now. Okay, so you are getting inquiries on the on the 360 booth. Okay, um, so Nico, I'm curious, man, and and maybe Nico, you'll be probably one of the individuals we do a podcast with, man. Because like I said, guys, you guys wanted the podcast. I'm for the podcast. Uh, people are definitely liking the concept of having a podcast. I feel like. It's going to add value to us, especially if we're driving or if we're cleaning or we're doing stuff in the background and our eyeballs need to be where we're at. But we can listen to the podcast in the background, all those tips, those experiences. I think that's going to be an amazing thing. So the podcast is definitely going to be happening. And then maybe in the in the podcast, Nico, you can kind of uh, give us uh, some insight as far as how it is to have an existing photo booth and then implementing the 360 booth and tell us a little bit about your challenges and a little bit about your competition where you reside at right now. I want to know. And then Manny wrote, how is the cold sparkles going so far? So far, I use them for two events this past weekend. Uh, so far, out of all the cold sparkles that I've had, I like the, the functionality. I like the command modes that's on the remote. I like how easy it is to press 12 at the end, and that puts them through a cooling phase. And it takes about six minutes to get to that cooling phase. So point where they reach, I think it's a 200. Is it 200? I think it's 250. Um, it gets to 250 degrees, meaning it, not, not degrees, but to, it cools down to 200, level 250, and then you can actually turn it off. So, so far, so good, guys. Uh, I have an event coming up this Saturday, as you guys already know, and I'm going to be using the cold sparks again. I'm going to use both of them. So if if they do good again this uh, event, um, I can honestly say, like, maybe you guys can get them too if it's in your budget, okay? Londi, Sean, John. Let's see, do you have another software recommendation for the 360? I don't have. Let me, let me see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I did a. I I shot a video with my iPhone, and then I used an application called Boomerang, and the video came out really sick. I'm going to elaborate on that. In fact, let me make a video on that. What I want to do is I want to show you guys that there's definitely going to be an alternative to touch picks sooner or later. But for now. There are things that we can do with our with with just our phone alone that's going to allow us to have that same slow mo and then the boomerang feature, and we can get that done just on our phone without having to pay uh, touch picks or having to deal with it glitching during an event due to bad service on our phones, reception, and things like that. All right, Mondo the human, what's up, man? Let's see photobomb pictures. What is that mic you're using in some of your videos? Yeah, so that mic, do I have it here? Oh. That mic I bought on Amazon, and what it is is it's a headset like this, and then it has a little extended arm out with the with the mic right here, and then this part right here goes connected to a speaker, and that speaker you can either hang from your neck, or you can or you can go ahead and uh and attach it to your belt, 
And then, of course, it has a volume down here. And you can also put a memory card to record your voice uh, onto a memory. I don't really use a memory card, but I like it because you guys know that already some of you guys already had an event and you know you have to raise your voice to make sure you're you're communicating clearly and loud uh so clarity and brevity is everything so when you have this microphone attached it it really saves a lot of energy throughout the day because you're not screaming and the next day on a sunday your throat don't feel too messed up so i bought that on amazon for close to i think it was 40 dollars. if you guys buy yours on amazon uh, one quick thing. If you guys buy, let me see. Let me let, give me a second, guys. I'm going to go on to Amazon and see if I could put the link right here in the chat box. Let me see if I can do that for you guys right now. I'll be right back here. Let me see. something like this I, I found the category guys just let me look for the one i bought um that way if you guys get the exact one i bought um here it is i found it okay i found it guys let me see if i can get the link for you give me a sec hold on this right here. copy link okay cool i'm gonna go ahead and put it in right now Where is it at? Okay, there it is. Um, it's right here. It's in it's in the thread now. So you guys use this if you it, it, and not not just that, but it really gives you uh it really makes you stand out because it really makes you look more like an operator, more like a director. And for reals, man, it saves you lots of energy and it's easy on the throat. That sounded terrible. Anyways, let's see. All right, photobomb pictures. There you go. The link's right there. Uh, so, so if you guys want to buy that same product right now, it's actually cheaper. Right now, it's only thirty-five bucks. So, uh, that's definitely something that I would recommend, and I'm happy with it. And if it breaks down, I would definitely buy a second one for sure. And remember, guys, always get insurance on the stuff that you're buying for your business because if it breaks down, you want to make sure you're covered for at least a year. All right, Nico. Good to know. All right, Mondo, for sure. I got that. Yep. Definitely. In fact, um, if you guys can 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 email me, um, if you guys you guys that want to be on the podcast, if you guys can email me, that way I have that information and then I can reach out to you guys and we can start coordinating. Ty, 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 I see you. Let's see, David, you must have missed my touch piece question. Do they have a trial version? Yeah. So TouchPix does have a demo version. Uh, the only thing is you won't be able to save the video or uh, or or send it out. But yes, they do have a uh, demo version, which you can definitely you know try at home in your garage, wherever, and get a little bit of uh, experience there and until you build up your confidence. And then when you actually do have events, you can just you know buy the first week for the fifty dollars, uh, and then eventually when you have bookings on a monthly basis, you know at least three times a month, you can pay for the monthly version. Okay, cool. Drop the link for the mic in the group, please. Yep, Brittany did that already. It's right there for you guys. Moses, do you have a finished? Do you have a finished your event before you activate another event? So remember, guys, that on touch picks, if you have a team of uh, two operators, what you guys can do is you can activate two events at one time, and you guys can be in, in different places. So it's not limited to one event per per uh, touch picks. You guys can have multiple events running and then close that event and open up a secondary one. And you can do this while having an existing one open. If that answers your question, uh, Moses. I appreciate you guys showing me love and uh, hitting the, the thumbs up here during this live stream. That thumbs up always really helps. You know, you guys already know how it is. It's like we're living in a world full of technology and algorithm is one thing that uh, we can't get away from anymore. It's crazy when I have conversations with people. Uh, just a few minutes later, whatever conversation we're talking about, I get ads with that product or service on my phone. Kind of spooky, I know, but hey, it is what it is. We just got to roll with it and use it to our advantage whenever we can. Video idea, a series where your review 
where you review member sites and give them tips on how to increase. Yeah, I've been doing that, Mondo, with my one-on-ones. Uh, a lot of people uh, that book, they want to go over their website. They want to go over uh, methods and strategies to use so that they can have more traffic to their website and overall get more business, get more calls. So that's something that I've been doing one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and because sometimes, like I said, you can have a really good looking website, but if the infrastructure of the website, you know, what's, what's behind that website, like, you know, SEO, if it's not there for you, then it's going to be difficult to get your website categorized and indexed. So, but yeah, man, that's, that's a, that's a good idea. Ryan Henderson, um, there's a video I made on how to minimize the amount of uh, shakiness going on on your booth when you record. Now, it's a combination of several things, Ryan. One is your platform has little knobs in the bottom that act as little legs and they adjust, okay? So make sure on your 360 booth that the ones that sit in the center are not sticking out too much where it makes this motion here on the, on the, on the uh, platform. Make sure that the ones in the center are all the way tight inside and that the actual exterior ones on the booth are leveled out whenever you get to your event level those out and then um watch my video go to my google go to my google go to my youtube page and go to the little search bar on the about section and type in uh shakiness and it'll show you a video on where how i go on how how to set it up to have that uh keep it as firm as possible another thing is i'm curious to know what type of phone you're using uh, most of the time, if you use like an action camera, because action cameras were meant to have strong stabilizers, you won't really run into that issue. But if you're using an iPhone 11 and below, you're going to get a good amount of shakiness because the stabilizer on those models is not the greatest. But once you go to your 12 series, 13 series and up, you'll get uh, more, uh, what's it called? You'll get more smoother videos with all that shakiness going on. I hope that answers your question. I need to get that link off of Alibaba, um, Gilbert. Let me see if I can get that for you guys real quick. All right, hold on. Hold on, guys. You know, I'm gonna be getting off really quick. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put that link. Uh, to the supplier that I use, guys. But before, uh, and I'm going to say this again when I make the video for the cold sparkles. I just want I, I just want to let you guys know straight up that I bought from this supplier, uh, and it's not a supplier that I'm heavily recommending just because I don't have, what can I say? I haven't had enough time with the product, and I haven't really dealt with them in a sense where the product is no good and, I, and how, they handle, how they would handle a return. So when you guys are buying this product, just do your own diligence, ask them about the, the warranty, make sure that's in the agreement on your purchase contract, that what it's going to cover, how much of it is going to cover for how long. Because like I said, this is my first time buying from this supplier. And so uh, I just wanted to make you guys, I just want to make sure you guys are buying uh, as, as wise a uh, businessman and not just buying it because it's affordable or because you want it to have your purchase. But look at it from a, from, from every standpoint, from one, is it, how reliable is it? Is it easy to get a hold of the representative? And because they are in, they're in China, we just remember that we're in different time zones and just kind of weigh those things out. I'm going to go ahead and plug my email right here right now, guys. All right, let's go ahead and do it. So we can open my email right now. Go ahead and copy and paste. If you guys want to get on a podcast with me, hit me up on the email. It's the email right here, right? Here we go. Hyper. A canary capital rentals at gmail.com. Go ahead and copy and paste. If you guys want to come out in the podcast, go ahead and email me and I'll start making arrangements so that we can start this podcast, man. I'm excited about this podcast. I really am. This is going to be dope. You're welcome, Ty. Keegan writes, Hey, David, I've been following you since day one. All right. I'm finding it hard to get bookings considering my competitors are grabbing them all. What a good way to get the job locked in before they do keegan uh if it's if it's in your budget man and you want to book me for an entire hour we can go in to see your your one your competitors uh one thing always is what are your competitors doing how what kind of quality content do they have on their website 
How many social media platforms are they on? What are their prices like? Was it easy to find your competitor? Uh, you know, all that stuff, you got to really weigh that in. When I do one-on-ones, what we usually do is we go into the competitor's uh, website and then we put in a little, a little formula that I showed you guys on YouTube and we see how many citations they have. If they have a lot of citations, let's say, for example, they have over 200 citations, it might take us a while to beat them when it comes to citations because citations is what it, it, it carries weight as far as where your website shows for those keywords in that area because they're your competitors. So you're competing for keywords. You're competing for keywords that have good volume. So if a lot of the volume is going to your competitors, there's a way to shift that. And now you get you start getting more traffic and you start getting more inquiries. So if it's within your budget, man, I would say book me for an hour and we will focus heavily just on that aspect of where your competitors at. Why are they getting most of these uh most most of these bookings? And because man, you should be getting a piece of the pie, right? So yeah, man, I really can't break everything down because I'm gonna be getting off pretty soon. So it's like I said, if it's within your budget, um, but just know that I'm keeping this in mind. Sorry, guys, a message came in and it's super loud. Just know, Keegan, that I keep this, I'm gonna keep this in mind and moving forward because I'm gonna be elaborating on a website. I'm also gonna be elaborating on ways to make your website, like I said, rankable and easy to look, easy to, uh, easy to find when you are searching for certain keywords. So if it's not the, if, if it's not in your budget to book me one-on-one, -on -one, that's totally cool, man. Just hang tight for me and do whatever research you can in the meantime and go through my videos on SEO ranking, get familiar with that process and go ahead and start killing it, man. Keep killing it. Cause you know, you gotta have a piece of that pie, man. It's Glenda. Have you ever done a pop-up event at the beach? At that that was actually one of my very first ideas because I one I love the ocean, I love the beach. So I was thinking like, you know, what I'm gonna do if I don't have no bookings at the very beginning, I'm gonna drive my ass down to Huntington Beach or Laguna Beach, and I'm just gonna you know go in the parking lot, open it up. I'm sure people like skating and rollerblading and biking would would love to jump on the booth. And what I was gonna do is on the overlay, I was gonna put my company's information. But thank God, I didn't have to do all of that uh, just because, like I said, I spent a lot of time doing other things online that are more powerful, even though I do agree that when you guys go to these events or carnivals and do these pop-ups, they really help. Just got to make sure you guys are strategizing, make sure you guys go there with a bunch of your information so that they can hold on to it or find you on Instagram, making sure you guys are getting a good amount of leads. Also, if you guys want, you guys can also charge per spin. Today, I was talking to a 360 booth operator that season. He's been in the game a lot longer than I have. And we were talking about um, his upcoming event. He's going to do his first event where it's going to be based off spins per person. So his uh, he, what he was sharing was, I'm going to be charging $10 per spin per person. And so I was sitting there listening to him, uh, you know, kind of go over his idea. And I thought, that's a cool idea, man. If it's going to be a carnival, it's going to be over 2,000 people. Then as long as you get about 500 people, on that booth during your day, you know, you're going to make about $500. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, he's going to give me some feedback on that. And this is why I think a podcast is going to be cool because later on I can go and, and set up the podcast. And then, you know, this is where people really come in with their personal experience as a 360 booth owner. So that's why I'm loving the concept of starting a podcast guys. And I'm, I'm very happy that I'm going to have you guys on there. You know, like I see your profile picture. I see, uh, you know, your grammar. I see what you guys are writing. But really talking to you guys is going to be a whole different experience, and I'm excited for that. You're welcome, Moses. But yeah, Glenda, if you live by the beach, go for it. What what uh, what city are you spinning in, Glenda? Keegan, like I said earlier, brother, I'm I'm doing everything by myself right now, man. I do take assistance to events, but right now I roll solo. So if you call. If you if we get on a call, it's gonna be me. If you email me, it's gonna be me. It, you know, you know, you guys. Uh, let me just just be really real with you guys. And it, I know you guys really will probably understand me, but I I can't keep up with all of your questions on YouTube. And then we have our family on the uh, Facebook, and then I have uh, TikTok. So just just imagine, right? Me, one man, trying to get to every single individual in the beginning it was possible when i had uh, a family of 300 uh operators on youtube and now we're pushing close to 3000 and so it accelerated really quick i didn't see it coming but i guess because we've been keeping it real and being transparent you know people recognize real and everyone's trying to help each other out and everyone can actually see the things that i'm going through 
and they relate. And because they relate, you know, we we connect at that level. So um, that's why I started doing the one on ones, because I realized some people want to get started right away or they want advanced answers really quick and they have the budget for it. And for the people that can't afford me, they can't book me for one hour. I understand where you're at right now. And this is why we're doing this right now. This is why we're communicating through a live stream. I'm here in California, San Bernardino, and we're, we're getting it done. I'm trying to help you guys as much as possible. Okay. All right. So if you guys can hit that like button for me, we're at 13, but we got like 31 operators on here. Some of you guys are not showing me any love. <laughs> you tough crowd. 13 likes. Okay. Well, we got, we got 14 likes. There we go. That's the love I'm talking about. That's the support we need. 14 likes. Here we go. All right. So Glenda, how long does your power source? Uh, so the talent cell that I have, that's a portable battery that goes on your photo booth, on your 360 booth, that lasts about three hours. So you're going to get about three hours, uh, but it also depends if you're using it constantly. But for the most part, it's going to last you a solid three hours. All right, Mondo emailed me. No, photo bomb. My mistake, I meant to say if he gets at least minimum of 50 people on there. If he gets there, if he gets 500 people on there, that's going to be a nice payday. Thanks for catching that, man. I, I, I talk fast. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. Thank you. See, that's what I like about photobomb pictures, man. It always comes through with, with, with facts, you know. And I like that because that adds value to the family. Frank's memory, welcome. I'm, I'm the same way right now. I have to go solo. It's okay, man. We're rolling solo right now, and we're doing what we can. And it keeps us proactive. It keeps us sharp. It, you know, we learn how to be even more independent and creative. So rolling solo is, is totally cool. And sometimes it does get lonely. And believe me when I say sometimes it get lonely. The, uh, the world, when you are on the road and you're an entrepreneur, that road is very lonely. Very, very lonely because no one's really going to fuck with you because you're building something. And when you're building something, no one wants to get any, your hands, don't, they don't want to get their hands dirty. They don't want to have blisters. But to come back around and be like, oh, man, you really did it. And then they want to hang out with you. But by then, you know who's really riding with you and who's not. So if you guys are rolling solo doing this 360 booth business because you guys want, you know, change your lifestyle, I totally get what you're going through. And like I said, entre the entrepreneurship road, I guess, was designed to feel lonely. But if you guys have a partner, then like I said, you guys are super blessed and really lucky to have each other. But just just know that. Sometimes it messes with your mind and your heart because you, you feel like you, there's a lack of support. And sometimes you just it just feels lonely sometimes, man. I'm going to be straight up with you guys. Hey, Ophelia, nice to see you. <laughs> I have ADHD. I was referring to your phone calls when people call for a quote. How do you deal with that when you have events on live? So that's actually happened to me, Keegan. So when I was I was actually on the road going to an event and my phone was blowing up because this is during graduation. And during graduation, guys, we 360 booth operators do really, really good in graduation season. This is my very first year. But I was talking, like I said, to a seasoned operator and he was telling me that definitely graduation is probably like the one of the one of the seasons that he's crazy busy. And a lot of people also like doing uh, their weddings before the fourth quarter because they want to make sure they have Christmas money and uh, holiday money. So this is going to be an interesting industry for me to still learn. And because I'm going to be learning every single month, every single event, this is information that's going to get passed on to the family. And then you guys are going to hit me up with some of the, your information as well. So it's going to help us all out. So uh, when I'm, when I'm taking a, when I'm taking, when I'm at an event, Keegan, I get the call in. I don't answer that call because there's music blasting in the background. So I let it to get to voicemail. And then either uh, Sunday or S Saturday or Sunday, I'll follow up with the client. I'll thank them for their patience. Uh, and so then I, I just handle it from that point. Thank you, Stacy. You are awesome. You have taught me a lot very quickly. You are a fast learner, Stacy. That's what it is. That's just exactly what it is. You're just a fast learner. That's why you learn very quick. <laughs> so... Ophelia, how do you like never been on a live? Oh, welcome. This is your very first live. All right, Ophelia Gutierrez. Um, this is my very first year going uh live, by the way, guys. So it's it's uh it's pretty interesting. I see people doing it, but I never thought it would be me. But here I am with you guys. Pretty dope. 
Okay, so North Carolina, two hours from the beach. Okay. Yeah, I'm about uh, about an hour and 40 45 minutes from the beach. Hey, oh, look at that. Hey, guys, there's 25 operators on here, and I got 25 likes. That's love right there. That's 360 with family in the house, showing each other love as usual, as we should. Let's see. Frank Memory Booth wrote, yes, it does, my friend, who whom is a photographer for 10 years. She wanted to buy my business, and I say no. Have not heard of her since. Someone wanted to buy Frank's business. Hey, guys, so let's just talk about that real quick. What if you build a business or a franchise, and then later on you sell it for $100,000? Something to think about. You know, because I think that we're all in this industry right now, and, and we're going through this growth, right? And we're developing and we are being, uh, we're getting, I think as you get older, you grow more into your soul because you stop giving a shit about what other people think and you start focusing on yourself and what makes you happy. And you become this artist and this creator and you just dive deep into your heart, into your mind and you forget about other things that traditionally people would push on you, your parents, the community, you know, your, 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 uh, your culture. And so I don't know. This is another conversation. The podcast is going to be lit. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, Nico said, we got to uh, be unique and also, you know, come up with unique props and think outside of the box. Absolutely, guys. That's why I've been trying new props, you know, from LED glasses to inflatables. Who knows what's going to be next, man? And I'm looking forward to see how creative you guys get. Thank you, Keegan. I appreciate the love. Actually, I think uh, this probably has to be one of the very first time uh, someone sent me a tip and I'm, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Keegan, uh, he sent me $9 and 99 cents. <laughs> That's truly amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, brother. Um, Jag, let's see. Jag writes, what do you do on back to back events where the RGB lights only last two to three hours? Do you have spares for events or for event number two? Jag, that's a question that is an amazing question cool ass question because that's actually something that i was thinking about a few weeks back when it started happening to me when i had events back to back but here's here's how it worked out for me so because i had events back to back one was early in the day and then the other one was at night and this is the only way i can get to both events because i only have one 360 booth so the event during the day didn't require for me to actually use the rgb lights so i, I was actually using just the u200 light especially because these events were outdoors now let's say for example Let's say, for example, you're doing two events back to back and they're both in the evening. Then, yes, that would be challenging. Now, the way you can handle that is one. You guys are really hitting me up with some questions coming in heavy. Uh, Jack, the way we can do this is if you have two events and you only have a pair of four RGB lights and you have your U200 light, you guys get to get you guys got to become scientists. And what I mean by this is what I ended up doing is I would get my four RGB lights and then my U200 light. And what I would do is I would. Uh, for my RGB lights that are going to go surrounding the uh, the three uh, 360 booth, I would minimum I would take it to like uh, all the way to the top and then minus it by three. One, two, three. And I know that that's going to give me over three hours of light. And then on my U200 light, you guys have to gauge your U200 light and get familiar with your U200 light because your U200 light also has a limitation. But once you guys know the limitations on your equipment, you guys can set it to a point where it's optimized and it's going to be enough juice left on both your U200, your talent cell batteries, and your RGB lights and your anchor that's connected to your TV. You're going to get familiar with your entire equipment. And this is when you become an actual, not only operator, but a director, because you know how to direct throughout your whole production and you can make it to two events using just what you currently have right now. Now, with that being said, what I did have to do is buy a second talent cell battery because after a three hour event, that talent cell battery, if you have one of those events where the line is right there and it doesn't go away, meaning people are waiting to get on and there's no breaks, then that thing's going to be spinning for a whole three hours and that'll eat up your talent cell battery, which will keep you at maybe close to three hours. But if you have that second talent cell battery, that's going to give you another three hours and you'll be fine. But just keep that in mind, guys. Okay. That was a great question. I'm glad uh, someone brought that up. Thank you, Jack. I appreciate you, Keen. Yeah, I'm I'm still pretty uh pretty much brand new to the business, uh. But like uh like uh like Stacy said, you know, we're all learning really quick. Just like 
David, have you used the live feature on Wix? No, man. I have not used the live feature on Wix. Thank you guys for the for the thumbs up. I appreciate the love. No, uh, that, I have not used it. So, hey, hey, Gilbert, what's up? Elmer, Santa Maria, looking to start a small business. How much do you think I need to start something like this? I was on Amazon. Looks like, hey, Elmer, uh, if let me tell you, when I first started this uh, this YouTube channel, my first videos uh, go over my budget, how much I spent, what items I bought. So if you go, if you circle back to the YouTube channel, my first videos, which are the most popular videos of the entire channel, they go through my budget, what I bought, the items, and it goes to the list. Right there, you'll see that I spent under three thousand dollars, and this included almost the entire equipment that I have now. The only things that I recently added were uh, cold sparkles, a fog machine, a laser. What else, David? And I think that's primary, primarily it as far as bigger items go. So yeah, man, and this is why, Elmer, you want to buy directly from the factory and not pay retail price because as I told people in that video, guys, buy from the manufacturer. Verif and in fact, if you guys want to jump into the 3 booth industry, I keep telling you guys that my factory, my supplier is, link is in the description. Go ahead and reach out to them, get pricing, get a feel for their customer service. If you guys want to move forward and buy overseas, it's totally fine as long as you're buying from a verified supplier. And that's going to save you a lot of money, which you can use the, the rest of your budget to buy props to buy those RGB lights, to buy the U200 and, and things like that that are essential for your production. All right, Nico, so, all right, Elmer, so, so yes, sir, if you can go to YouTube, you'll find those videos. If you type in uh, my 360 booth budget, I think that I'll be on the very top. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, beach balls would be dope. So I have confetti. I have a few boxes of confetti uh, that I bought when I first started the business. And I thought I need a vacuum cleaner uh, if I'm going to use that confetti. Because remember, guys, in the contract or, you know, just in general, if we make a mess, we got to clean up after a mess. And I'm going to lie. I, I left I left events before with some cash that I didn't pick up because, you know, sometimes things get wild and you got to, like, break away and get to your next event. So I left some some money on the floor before. Not a lot. A few hundred dollars. All right, Ophelia Gutierrez writes, I live in a small city and I just and I just found out that there's like two other 360 booth operators. It's a it's a little discouraging, especially when they're already had more than one event from the looks of it. Ophelia, instead of giving me a sad face, go ahead and, and, and switch that over to a happy face. OK, because if those two other operators that have 360 booth already had their first event, that means there's a demand for the business that you have, my lady. OK, so. Go ahead and turn that frown upside down because that's an indicator that there is, like I said, a demand for the services you guys have. And if there's two operators there already, that's totally fine. Because remember, uh, how many people are in your city? Thousands and thousands of people are in your city. And those thousands of people are going to have events, whether it's birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, graduations. But it comes out when it moves lips, it's a bunch of gibberish. So you get the point, right? So go ahead and turn that frown upside down because, like I said, that's just an indicator that there is business to be gained. So get in the game, Ophelia. Gilbert, I've been searching for the cold spark machines on Alibaba and a supplier sent me, sent me on, sent me on your videos saying we're her customer. I was left for what? Did you guys see what Gilbert wrote? He said that he went on Alibaba and looked for a, a supplier for the cold sparkles. And they told him like that I was their supplier. And they showed me a video showing that I was uh, their customer. I want to know if that's true. That's crazy. Hey, Gil Gilbert. So what I'm going to be doing, Gilbert, is when I make a video on my cold sparks and just kind of like break the, the down the, the, the process of how to like turn them on, how to get them going and what not to do and things like that. I'm going to put the link to the actual supplier I use on Alibaba. That way you guys uh, make sure you guys are dealing with the supplier that I actually purchased mine from. Uh, that's pretty interesting. Thanks for sharing that, Gilbert. Always bring extra battery banks, plugs, and then charge while you're on the drive to another location. Yep, that's doable. If your car has like a 12-volt uh, uh, input, you can be uh, charging multiple items at once. So that's a good point Nico brought up. Yep, so two U200 lights. Okay, Brittany has two U200 lights. 
She's doing it real big with two U200 lights. And those lights, man, they if you know how to adjust the brightness and not having too bright, because if you have them too bright, you don't need all that brightness, guys. Remember, always gauge your production. If you don't need to have your lights on the highest level possible, you can save battery and still get the same production. If you dim it a little bit, then there's no reason for you to have the brightness all the way up. Thank you, Jag. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for the likes, guys, as well, man. Appreciate that, too. So, uh, Wilson, uh, Moses, I haven't had an event yet. Trying to get to know the software and learning trim music. What's the best way to advertise? Uh, Moses, in the very beginning of this uh, video, the reason we started off this uh, live stream today. Thank you, Lord. Uh, is because uh, people have been reaching out to me saying, how do I advertise? How do I market my business without any content? I, have, I don't have any events yet, and I haven't uh, been able to get any yet. So what I'm going to be doing is if you guys hit me up on Instagram, tell me like, hey, David, can you share any videos with me? And what I'll do is I'll send you all my videos that don't include the cold sparks, and I'll send you guys pictures as well. You guys can use those videos and those pictures to put them on your social media and website. And that way, uh, you guys look like you guys are already established and settled in and actually have experience. You guys can use those videos to your advantage. Those are absolutely for free for you guys. Uh, just because I know how it is when you first start off for business and you don't have that content, you have to get creative. And you guys already know what I did. I went I went all over this uh, online and do a lot, a lot of screen recording, a lot of copy and paste, a lot of downloading uh, existing images. It's funny. I'll tell you guys a quick story before I get off. Really quick story before I get off. So uh, I, my first, my second booking, uh, the lady that booked me, she said, uh, can I get the booth that's on your website? I, I like that color. And it wasn't my booth. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it wasn't my booth. It was a booth that I took from Google's images and I put on, on, my, on my website. So I told her, oh, we, we, I don't have that one. I only have this, this color. And then the colors of my booth were like neon blue, like the same uh, logo that you guys see on uh, my uh, YouTube. But she wanted a black one, the flat black one. I told her I don't have one. And then she goes, what, what other colors do you have? And I'm like, shit, what other colors do I have? And I'm thinking, she thinks I have a lot of booths. And I'm thinking, like, I'm not there yet. So I straight up told her, like, that's this is the only one I have right now. However, um, the way we shoot our videos, the booth won't show uh, because it's angled almost looking up. So the booth is not really visible and the color is not really visible. Oh, and then, so then she said, okay, cool. And I was like, whew. But what I ended up doing is I, I think I went to Michael's. And I bought, uh, I bought, what is it called? Um, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a film, like a black film. I forgot what it's called. I'm losing my mind right now. I'm running out of energy. Uh, what is it called? Anyways, it was like a black tape and I ended up putting black tape on top of my booth. So when we got to her event, my booth was all black. Uh, and then, so I did that for her because it's something that she requested. And now coming soon, we're going to have 360 magnet tops come in. I got them in white and in black. I'm going to use the white ones for my indoor events. I'm going to use my black ones for outdoor events just because it's going to be easier to clean. And guys, I am exhausted. I've been talking my ass off and it's a good thing. I'm not complaining. This is exercise for me to become better at what I'm doing. And that's being a communicator here in the uh, 360 Booth family community. I am very grateful for all the likes. I'm grateful for all your support. I'm happy you guys are on Facebook and really helping each other out and networking here while we're doing these live streams. And uh, thank you, David. Appreciate it. But your boy needs to go ahead and get other stuff done uh, because we got to stay busy. So uh, I just want to thank you guys all. Uh, you're welcome, Ty. I want I want to thank you guys all for just taking time out of your busy day, out of your lives, to you know jump on here and seeing what's up and 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 think of ways to how do you grow your business? How there you go, Ophelia. That's what I wanted to see and how to just be a better person during this lifetime because it really is. It's like your reflection is going to be your business, is a reflection of who you are. Uh, your personality dictates your personal reality. And so that's what it is. Your personality is a reflection of your personal reality. So keep that in mind as well. Um, and yeah, guys, like I said, hit me up on Instagram. If you need photos, if you need videos, I'm there to help you guys out. Okay. Uh, let's see. Lawana. Thank you, David. You are the best. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you, Keegan. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that gesture. Uh, that was really cool. Appreciate it. Um, thank you, Gabriel. All right, guys, this is a hard part. I got to say goodbye. Thank you, Mondo. 
yeah, you guys have a good night. I know some of you guys are probably out like in North Carolina area, and Texas, and it's a little it's a little later out there. It's so like two to three hour difference. Timmy, you're a little late, sir, but it's all good, man. I've been seeing you on the comment section. Uh, so, Timmy, remember this uh, this video is going to be uh, rendered and then it's going to play back on YouTube. I hope you get to watch it. There's a lot of cool information we all shared today, a lot of great questions as usual. So I'm very grateful for you guys coming out and really hitting me up with those questions. Honestly, you guys killed me today. I'm tired. Um, I got to get some water and, and go in the garage and do some experimenting. So... Photobomb pictures. Thank you. You take you take care, and you guys have a good night. And it's a pleasure, always. Peace. Oh wait a minute, I'm not showing a YouTube video. This is different. Take care, guys. Bye.